hello and welcome back to my channel in this video we will be looking at hurricanes in the caribbean a hurricane is a rotating low pressure system with organized thunderstorms which have maximum sustained winds which reach 119 kilometers per hour or 74 miles per hour. They occur in the Caribbean between June and November. Hurricanes form between latitudes 5 and 30 degrees of the equator. This is because below 5 degrees, the Coriolis effect is basically non-existent. And above 30 degrees, the temperatures are not warm enough to provide the energy for the system. The system moves westwards initial, initially and then northwards. For hurricanes to develop, a number of conditions must exist. These include sea surface temperatures of at least 26.7 degrees Celsius. This provides the conditions for evaporation. Secondly, there should be warm, humid air which provides energy for the system. A large enough Coriolis force is needed for this cyclonic activity to occur. Fourthly, there should be an upper level outflow or divergence to intensify the low pressure center. Low wind shear is also necessary to prevent the system from becoming lopsided or tilted and unwinding. Now, hurricanes develop in a number of stages. The first stage is a tropical disturbance. A tropical disturbance is a moving area of thunderstorm, which is not cyclonic. If the system develops beyond this, it will reach to a point where it becomes a tropical depression. A tropical depression is an area of low pressure with a circulation of clouds and maximum sustained surface winds of less than 34 knots or less than 38 miles per hour. Tropical storm is the third stage. Tropical storm is a counterclockwise circulation of clouds with maximum sustained surface winds of 34 to 63 knots or 39 to 74 miles per hour. And finally, if the tropical storm develops further, hurricanes will be formed. A hurricane is a well-organized system of clouds with heavy rain rotating around an area of low pressure. Hurricanes have maximum sustained surface winds of 64 or more knots or 
74 or more miles per hour. Now let's look at how hurricanes form. Hurricanes occur in the summer when the sea surface is heated by the sun. For this to be effective, the sea must be heated to a certain depth, which means that uh, hurricanes are formed offshore and away from the coast. The warm sea will then begin to heat the air above it. At the same time, evaporation takes place, converting liquid water to water vapor, which then becomes a part of the air and helps to increase the humidity of the atmosphere. Winds blowing across the sea surface also contributes to evaporation by moving the water vapor from the surface and mixing it with the rest of the atmosphere. During the process of evaporation, latent heat which was is sorry let me repeat, during the process of evaporation, latent heat is absorbed by the air. This will later serve a very important purpose in the development of the system. The hot, moist air above the sea surface will then begin to rise to higher heights since the, the warmer the air gets, the lighter it becomes. As the air rises, it will eventually cool to its dew point where it holds all the moisture that it can hold at a particular temperature. Since the air is already moist, dew point can quickly be reached. Now, any further cooling after dew point is reached will result in condensation. Two main things will happen in the process of condensation. Firstly, the water vapor will be converted to water droplets, which will float as cumulus clouds in the sky. Secondly, latent heat which was absorbed during the process of evaporation will be released during condensation. As the water droplets collide with each other in the clouds, they grow in size to form raindrops, which will in turn be pulled down under the influence of gravity to produce rainfall. Now, the release of latent heat helps to fuel the system. The heat results in further air rising, which leads to further cooling and condensation and which in turn causes the cumulus clouds to grow even higher to form towering cumulonimbus clouds, which produce very heavy rainfall and even thunderstorms. The rising air eventually reaches height where no further rising is possible. At that point, the air will have to flow out as divergence. This divergence creates a greater pull on the air at the surface, which in turn reduces the pressure at the surface significantly. Now, since winds blow from areas of 
high pressure to areas of low pressure, air from the surrounding environment will be drawn into the low pressure center. And as the winds blow inwards, they are deflected to the right of their path by Coriolis force. This results in an anti-clockwise movement of the air. Now, for the system to continue to develop, the relationship between the top of the system and the bottom of the system must be maintained. But this is only possible when there is a low wind shear. A high wind shear involves wind speeds blowing faster at the top than at the bottom. Wind direction may also be different as well. Under this condition, the system becomes tilted or lopsided. Convection currents may either not rise as high as normal or may be carried away by the strong winds at the top. This condition is therefore very hostile to the development of the hurricane. As long as the wind shear is low and the system continues to develop, it may eventually reach to the stage where maximum surface winds are 74 miles per hour or more. The winds blowing towards the low pressure center are so strong that they are unable to get to the center and will therefore spiral upwards to form the clouds of the eye wall. Some air will drop down the middle in the process to form the cloud-free eye or calm. As the system continues to develop, an elongated cloud and precipitation structure associated with rainfall will develop around the central core. This is known as the rain band. Air will also descend between the areas of updrafts of the rain band. As the air descends, it warms up and is then drawn inwards to the low pressure center, supplying even more heat to the system. So hurricanes as a whole move slowly and may even remain stationary at times. Two factors influence the path of hurricanes. These are trade winds, which blow the system towards the west, and the Coriolis effect, which adds a curve to the right. The storms usually develop out in the Atlantic Ocean, then move across the Caribbean region, and then towards the Gulf of Mexico coast. After crossing the mainland coast, most hurricanes weaken and quickly die out. This is because of the lack of moisture as well as the lower temperature over the land. Let's now examine how weather conditions will change as hurricanes pass over an area. Ahead of a hurricane, there is generally stable weather conditions. On a weather map, the isobars are generally widely spaced uh, with higher values. As humidity increases, the air feels hot and sticky. There is often an appearance of feathery cirrus clouds at high levels. 
without being warned of a hurricane, the average person would not even notice that it is close by. Children, for example, may still be playing outside unaware of the impending danger. But this would be a good time to ensure that documents are sealed in plastic bags, windows are sealed, and roofs are well battened down. As the hurricane approaches, wind speeds begin to increase rapidly. A great deal of low black clouds build up, bringing showers of rain. On this side of the hurricane, winds are blowing from the north. People are now experiencing the rain bands of the hurricane. As the eye wall passes over, winds are at their strongest. This is indicated on a synoptic chart by closely spaced isobars, which implies a steep pressure gradients. Here, the towering cumulonimbus clouds will bring thunderstorms. At this time, it is very unsafe to be anywhere on the outside as debris are flying lightning is flashing and in some places landslides and flooding are occurring. Along the coast, low pressure and strong winds result in storm surge where the sea level rises much higher than usual to cause coastal flooding. When the eye begins to pass over, conditions take a sudden turn. The sky is generally cloud-free, winds have largely stopped, and to the uninformed, this might seem like the storm has ended. Though many may at this time become curious and venture outside, this is not a wise thing to do. This is because after the eye passes, the other side of the eye wall will begin to pass over. Suddenly, the winds will once again become stronger, though this time it is blowing in the opposite direction. That is, it is blowing from the south. Anyone who is still on the outside at this time may be in serious danger. The intensity of the storm will then begin to slow down as the eye wall gives way to the other side of the rain band. Rainfall continues but are not as intense as at the eye wall. These showers may continue for days. After some time, the weather conditions will return to normal. However, it will take a much longer time for people's lives to return to normal. For some, a new normal will have to be accepted. This is where I will say goodbye for today. I encourage you to attempt past paper questions on the topic and to do some further reading. Continue to support my channel by liking this video, sharing it with someone, and definitely subscribe if you have not already done so.